So tonight we're going to have a look at the, the key catching skills. Please interact um, with the session as much as possible. I will be asking you to text in at certain times. Please be as actively, actively participate if you can. So that'll be really appreciated. So again, just thank you for attending this evening and indeed for attending all our webinars to date. Um, the turnout and, and the audience has been fantastic and hopefully um, we can do it justice. So as we said, the, this is webinar five and it's focusing on the key catching skills of, of the low catch, the body catch, the reach catch and the high catch. So as you can see, this is a fifth. The four that we have uh, completed to date have been kicking for possession. The hand fist passes solo, which Tony done, the tacting and evasion, um, which Gareth done, the kicking for scores, I think, I think was Tony again and tonight we're doing catch. And that leaves us with one left to run on this series, which is the 3rd of March on the crouch lift and blocking. And then we're going to look at uh, a series of webinars going forward. I think a lot of you filled in and completed a questionnaire, but 168 uh, questionnaires returned to us of uh, the type of webinars or programs that, that coaches would like to see. And on the basis of that, we'll, we'll deliver the next sessions. OK, so the content tonight is, again, we will revisit that whole thing about coaching philosophy. It might be a bit repetitive because it's been repeated a wee bit in all our five webinars, but there's nothing you know, wrong with, not, with hammering the message home as long as it's a good message. So we'll revisit coaching philosophy and skill development. Again, we will think about the coaching points around those uh, four catching skills, and we'll think in terms of head, hands and feet. It says there, actually, hands, head and feet. I tend to think about head as an eyes, hands, feet. So knowing when to intervene, coachable moments, you don't have to intervene and be in an out and spot and fixing every two seconds and killing a good session. But there are times when you see a player maybe stuck at a particular phase or a particular um, coaching point where you might have to intervene. So just know the time and the place when it is right to intervene. And as I said, the key, those are the four catching skills that we'll look at tonight. Spotting best practice, fixing fault, faults, particularly when they're fatal flaws. So again, you know, this whole debate is raging all the time about the developmental coach as opposed to the coach that wants to one be Friday. So I would re-emphasize again that you keep wanting in perspective, particularly during the developmental phase uh, of the player's development when that pathway. So when wanting is kept in perspective, there is room for fun in the pursuit of victory. The pursuit of victory in itself is fun. That doesn't mean that you want to one or you you're creating a snowflake generation that don't have resilience, but you want to create an environment where people are not afraid to feel and they can really improve. Think about, think always about what will be rather than what you see in front of you at any given time. Okay, so again, this is revisiting old stuff, but this phase is, where does it all start? Well, we know it starts with the fundamental skills, the agility, the balance, the coordination. Those are the fundamental motor skills that if you don't have that base in, you will struggle to build the sports specific skills. I've seen lots of players, and I'm sure you've seen lots of players, great attitude, great players, but because maybe they missed a wonderful opportunity somewhere along the line on those, and that technical proficiency phase, they struggled then later on to perfect those skills. So as a great Greek philosopher, Aristotle once said, give me a child until he is seven and I'll show you a man. And I feel that that, phase that wonder of opportunity between four and seven even this as tight as that is very key for the for the learning of the sports specific skills and obviously the fundamental motor skills as well so the development of good movement skills is essential for the execution of those sports specific skills skill is king skill is king because players that are good technical skills that are bilateral movement have more time to make those good decisions that have to be made in the eye of the storm later on OK, the three phases of skill development early, where there's lots of errors. Um, feet, players feel all the time, if that's the word we want to use. We know that somebody has said that it takes a child 3,000 attempts before they can stand or maybe walk. I don't know which that is, but none of them is failure. None of them is failure. All of it is progression. We never, as the saying goes, we never lose. We either won or learn. Then there's intermediate phase where they have achieved a basic level of competence. They, they have the skills, but they can't. It isn't, it isn't automatic in the brain, but they still have to think about that skill, but they can perform them. And I believe at that stage, we should be getting them moving into games fairly quickly. 2v2, 3v3, lots of touches of the ball because, you know, you're you're killing three or four birds with the one stone there in terms of uh, tactical development, tactical development, building the engine in terms of fitness, agility, balance, all of those things. So get them into games as soon as you possibly can. 
And then obviously the, the advanced phase where the skill becomes automatic. They can, they're actually thinking of the next move. They're thinking about where the players are nearly before the, the, the player receives the ball because the skill at this stage is automatic in the brain. Um, so the technical skills are essential toolbox in the player's toolbox, essential tools in, to, in the player's toolbox. Always remember the model. If you're starting off coaching, everybody needs a structure to begin with. If you're more experienced coach, at coaching, maybe this will happen automatically or you, go, you have your own particular model. But introduce the skill, demonstrate the skill from a number of angles. If you're not confident in that, get a player who is uh, competent to do it. Execute in terms of have a progression, a session or several progressions of that skill in the form of a drill or activity and then give feedback, call them in, attend, review, provide feedback. Very simple model, but you can build a good session even around that structure. Okay, so activities for a purpose, just a few tips. You know, always think about anything you do must have a purpose and the players need to know that purpose and you need to know that purpose. So what is the objective if you're training a session? Do the players understand it and do what you're trying to achieve? And can you adjust the activity if it's falling flat on his face? Do you know how to make it easier? Do you know how to make it more difficult? And the whole... Uh, model again around that stepper model, being able to change the space, change the time allowed to perform a skill, the equipment, the amount of players involved in the in the activity or the rules to make it easier or more difficult. Okay, so that's fairly quick run through that. It's revisiting some of the old stuff, the stuff that we, we covered in the previous four webinars. So I'm just thinking about what we're going to cover tonight. So I just want you to watch this video. Catching and passing exercises build those skills that help players work together. They begin with moving the ball along the ground before progressing to catching and passing a bouncing ball and finally a ball travelling in the air. OK, so that's a lovely wee video because it starts off with kids maybe, I don't know, about four, five, six eight years of age and they're starting off on the floor and they're just rolling the ball, watching that ball the whole way into the hands, scooping that ball up with the hands out in front and giving the ball a hug. And that's the sort of terminology you might want to use with young kids. Maybe you want to change the ball if it's really young kids of three or four. It might be a softer ball, which is very non flatting It's not going to hurt them or anything. And they're down on their knees and they're watching that ball right into their hands and they're picking that up and they're securing it to their bodies. And that is where it all starts from. And that's why we're calling that from, from floor to sore. Okay, so we're just going to start here by looking at the low catch and we're just going to look at it in the game context. When I say that, we're just looking at the, 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 the low catch uh, performed at the highest level. Nine minutes remain. Settling. The low catch is a basic technique in Gaelic football used to receive a pass bouncing along the ground or approaching the player low to the ground. Into the corner. Derek Kavanagh gets there first. There it is again here. But uh, Kerry get away with it. As Michael McCarthy mounts out well here by Fennelly. As Kerry start the process again. Searing heat of Porky Cleave on that occasion. Good chair. Got a point in the first half that day, and he's got another one here. So after years of coaching and training and hours of tactical proficiency training and all the rest, this is the level that players might want to hope to get to in the heat of the battle on the biggest stage that there is. Um, and just remember that, you know, all catches, all receiving skills are possession. There's none of them better than the other. Every, if anything that gains you possession is important. So, you know, the, the high catch might be the one that everybody thinks about in terms of it's very flamboyant, it's, it's maybe a more sexy skill than the rest, but it's just gains your possession just the same as a, as a pickup or a low catch or whatever. So that is key. Okay, so just I asked you at the beginning if you would uh, interact uh, using your chat board or your text. So I just want you to text me in or Oshin in what you feel are the key coaching points of the low catch. Don't worry about the, the flashy technology or fl flashy terminology or language. Use whatever language that you feel is appropriate and the children or kids will understand. So if you would do that, I'm going to give you maybe a minute to 30 seconds to do that. OK, so we've got things coming in already. So let's, let's get everybody coming in. Position your body behind the ball. Absolutely crucial. You've got to match the body to the ball all the time. Players that lean the hands out to the side. Under pressure on a wet day, the ball will go through there and you've got to match the body, like good goalkeeping uh, skills, the body to the ball. Very good. 
simple football, fine. Get your body behind where the ball will land. Body position. Think about what is the body position. Arc in the body, letting the ball into cloth so that you know, you're not making a hard chest or a hard body so that the ball is bouncing back out again. Body low over the chest, which is brought into the chest. Eyes on the ball at all times. Um, the ball bounced in front of the player. Eyes, feet, very good. Eye on the ball. Catch with both hands, body behind the ball. Listen, that is all excellent stuff and brilliant. And thank you very much for coming in there with all of those responses. So I'm just going to let this video run and you can pick out how many of the coaching points of this that you got. And don't worry about, as long as the terminology means something to you and to the players you're working with, that is the key thing. Here we see the low catch technique being performed by an elite player. Note the position of the head, hands and feet. Now let's look at each of the key teaching points for the low catch. As the ball approaches, get behind the ball, bending the back and knees. Head down, eyes on the ball. Extend the arms low with the elbows close together and the fingers pointing to the ground. Step forward, placing one foot alongside the ball. Spread the fingers of both hands to create a W shape and cushion the ball into the hands. Hold the ball securely with both hands and bring into the chest. If possible, catch the ball before it bounces, securing it into the chest before moving quickly away. Okay, so you'll note that you most most of you have actually got quite a number of the coaching points that have been outlined in that uh, feedback. Um, just be careful, you know, that you're bending the ball, you're picking the low catch, you're sweeping into the ball, one foot in front of the other for balance, sweeping down low, and the hands underneath pointed towards the ground. And the minute the ball makes contact with those hands, those hands are big. Think about big hands all the time. The whole thing about the W and all of that, and bringing the body into cloth. And above all, don't forget about what happens after that, moving off at pace, because you don't want to be gaining possession and being a sitting duck. This is a game of constant movement, so you want to be moving off at pace. So that was excellent. Okay, so just going to let you look here. I'm not going to ask you to text in anything in at the minute because there's a fair few videos on this. I'm going to let you look just at what the common errors might be. This will help you in your coaching going forward. Not getting low behind the ball is a common error that many players commit when learning the low catch technique. To correct this error, get behind the ball as it approaches, bending the back and knees. Keeping the arms and hands too far apart is an error that many players commit when performing the low catch technique. This error may result in the ball falling between the arms and hands. To correct this error, extend the arms low with the elbows close together and the fingers pointing to the ground. OK, just bear in mind that you won't need to know these all the time and you don't need to be interjecting during a training session on a regular basis. But a player who's having a problem, it may be one of these issues. So you will have hopefully if you've paid attention tonight and you look again, you have a look at this uh, recording when it's available, you will be able to help both those players in your group that has that are struggling. Some just drills that was shown tonight. Now, beware, these come with a sort of a, a, a caution. A lot of these drills, maybe I wouldn't like to see being used in my own club, and I'm sure you're no different, but you have to start somewhere. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with drills, but I do believe that once players have an intermediate grasp of the skills, get them into games, 2v2, condition games, award a score every time they execute a low catch well, just a wee bit concerned to some of these drills that they seem to be sort of rooted to the cones. The cones are actually stopping movement rather than encouraging movement. This is a basic drill to practice the low catch technique. Divide the players into groups of three, each group in triangle formation approximately three metres apart. Ensure each group has adequate space to perform the technique. Player A throws the ball low towards the feet of player B. Player B then repeats the drill with player C, 
and so on around the triangle. After a set time, change the direction of the drill. OK, so you as coaches would be thinking immediately how you might improve that drill. How would you make it more interactive? How would you make it maybe more movement in it? Um, the danger with cones is that players begin to feel that they're rooted to the cone and they can't move away from the cone. I would like to see movement both into the ball and away after securing possession. So step to meet the ball and move on. But, you know, as again, you have to say it, you have to start somewhere. OK, so this is just a wee one that myself and Tony were up one night and on the screen and we just had our phones with us and we took a few of how we'd like maybe to see the skill executed. So the key thing here is moving in. You know, if, you, if you're going to do a drill, have a drill where they're move, that's more match realistic, where they're moving into the, to the swoop, they're moving into that low catch and securing possession and driving through. So, you know, there's various hundreds of ways of setting up drills or activities to do that. OK, so I think this may be a wee game, so we'll let you just see how this... This is a fun game to develop the low catch technique. Mark out a grid approximately 15 metres by 10 metres. Mark a zone approximately one metre wide across the centre of the grid. Two players are positioned at either end of the grid, with one player in the centre zone. The outer players attempt to throw the ball low past the centre player to the players at the far side. The centre player attempts to get behind the ball and catch it using the low catch technique without leaving the centre zone. Only one ball at a time may be thrown. The centre player receives a point for every ball successfully caught. Switch the centre player after a set time. OK, so there's nothing really wrong with that, other than for me, as I would like to see more players active. I don't want to waste any time during a session that they're not handling, getting touches of the ball. So you've got to be innovative and come up, come up with ideas of how you can get them all interactive, still perform the skill well um, and giving them the feedback that's necessary, whether that's 2v2 game or 3v3 or whatever condition you might have in, on that small side of the game. OK, so we're moving into the body catch. Now, you'll find as we go through this, a lot of the skills relating to both the four catches, the low, the body, the reach, are very, very similar, but there's some differences in them. So we're going to start off just again by putting the body catch in the context of the game played at the highest level. To start vigorously out of midfield, Tommy Griffin letting it rip once again in there. Gooch peeling away from his marker. Kevin O'Neill dropping it in, but dropping it into the goalkeeper's hands. The body catch is a basic technique in Gaelic football. This type of catch is used when the ball is dropping between waist and head height, and the player has time to cushion it into his chest. It is used mainly by the goalkeeper. It should be coached early in the development of the young player. Very quickly taken by Leash, down as far as Russ Monnelly. Will it curl in the right-hand post? It does. They're still there, firmly in the hunt. Four points for Russ Bonnelly. His masters with the 45. Didn't really connect with it. Will it curl? Not sufficiently. Crossfield ball. Aimed mm -hmm. over at Stevie mm -hmm. McDonald. With Ryan McManaman. Onto the right boots. Floating like a butterfly. So always think when you're coaching a skill, how what are you coaching it for? So you, you when you have children of a certain age or, or young um, youth players or whatever, you're thinking of how they might perform on the highest stage later on in their in their football career. So that is why the body catch is important. And you can maybe illustrate that that to them and put that skill in context. You can see that a lot of those would all be marks in the in the modern game with the mark with the inside mark rule now. So, you know, it doesn't matter whether the ball's taken six foot in the air or whether it's a massive catch above the head. As if it's taken before it hits the grass, it's a mark. So um, it's equally as important from that perspective. OK, so I'm going to ask you again to text me in anything that you feel is different in terms of the coaching points for the body catch than the low catch. What might be different? Anything different or is it all the same skills? So that's going to get you thinking a little because that's not an easy question to answer so just i'm going to give you a minute to get stuff coming in for me please and i don't mind if you repeat some of the skills by the way that you have for the low catch either so let's get to think it let's get going 
So Fenton, thank you very much for that. Fenton is coming in with hold the ball tight. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, possession is good king. You don't want to be giving it away after you've made contact with the ball. Hands are cup rather hands are cup rather than the W shape to create the basket. Yeah. I suppose the body catches receiving a slightly different area of the body. Think about that. Yes, somebody's come out. I think it's Packy. Say it again. The body central to where you think the ball will land. Yeah, getting the body. Um, think about the area of the body. You're going to receive that body catch in. I uh, had a coach that used to always refer to let the body into cloth. What did he mean by letting the body into cloth? Sort of arcing the body away, but bringing the ball into the body um, at the same time. More accurate than the catching. Eye on the ball. Good timing. Hands upwards, Vincent, very good. Hands upwards, create a cradle for the ball, yeah. Create a cradle for the ball, yeah. We used to refer to young kids when we were coaching, talking about the bucket of the digger. You know, get the bucket of the digger out. That made sense to some of them, particularly from, from the rural areas. <laughs> particularly from the area where I come, obviously. Uh, grip the ball into the chest, cushion the ball if into the stomach area, yeah, through the bread basket, through the letterbox. We used to, coaches used to see things like that. That made sense to us. Now, it might be, might, mightn't be the modern jargon they use nowadays, but let the ball into cloth, through the letterbox, into the bread basket, means something to the players. Keep your eyes first and get your body and feet right. Listen, thanks very much for that. So I'm going to very quickly, I'm just aware of time too. There's a lot of videos on this, so... Here is the feedback on the coaching points for the body catch. So just observe and listen and maybe take a few notes. Here we see the body catch technique being performed by an elite player. Note the position of the head, hands and feet. Now let's look at each of the key teaching points for the body catch. As the ball approaches, Move to receive it between the arms and the chest. Head up, keep eyes on the ball. Extend the arms out in front of the chest with the elbows close together and the palms of the hands facing up. Spread the fingers of both hands to cushion the ball. Relax the chest on impact to cushion the ball into a secure position with both hands. Okay, so there you have it. Like again, there's not a lot of difference other than I think the area of the body uh, that you're taking the ball into is slightly higher up. You're not sweeping down low. Very often, the low catch is coming off the grass. Um, and just bear in mind, I know we'll go back to low catch, but 90% of the ball that a player receives in a game is very often off the grass, particularly inside forwards and forwards. You're taking the ball is actually coming off one bounce. So that's the importance of that low catch from earlier on. Elbows close together, watching the ball all the way into the hands. That's a big issue when it comes to high catch, that a lot of players close their eyes at the last minute that don't watch the ball the whole way into the hands, the shape of the hands. So here's some of the common errors we're just going to look at. Um, so this will give you an idea of things to look out for as well when you're delivering the skill. Closing the eyes as the ball is dropping is a common error when learning the body catch technique. This may result in the player failing to catch or fumbling the ball. To correct this error, encourage the player to keep the head up and the eyes open mm -hmm. as the ball approaches. Reducing the height the ball is dropping from may increase the player's confidence and also helps to prevent this error. Leaning back as the ball approaches is another common error when performing the body catch and may result in the ball bouncing off the player's chest. To correct this error, ensure the player moves to receive the ball between the arms and the chest, relaxing the chest on impact to cushion the ball into a secure position with both hands. Keeping the arms and hands too far apart is an error that many players commit when learning the body catch technique. It may result in the ball falling between the arms. To correct this error, extend the arms out in front of the chest with the elbows close together and the palms of the hands facing up. Okay, just one thing there that I might want to point out is always, as soon as you can, you may have to start off static, but as soon as you can, try and get movement into the ball and out of the ball. So in to receive and out upon receiving. Um, Key thing there too is elbows close together. This is
Okay, so we'll just look at a couple of drills here we might use. This is an intermediate drill to practice the body catch technique. Divide the players into groups of eight, one football per group. Mark out a distance of approximately eight to ten meters using cones. Place a marker halfway between. I would maybe just point out at that stage that I would never advocate having uh, cues like that at, at any age group. So, you know, you want to have a lot more balls in there, a lot more um, interaction and a lot more intensity. Let's get this going again. In the outer cones. The player in possession throws the ball underarm for the opposite player to run forward and catch at the halfway marker. The player in possession then runs on and hands the ball to the next player to repeat the drill. Each player follows on to line. And another point you'll probably pick up there is, you know, why you throw the ball when you can also be working on the hand pass or the fist pass. Up at the back of the opposite line. To make the drill more difficult, increase the distance between the players or get the players to throw the ball higher. Okay, so we're just going to move into, again, uh, Tony and I had been up and down the screen one night. We just done a few uh, things on our phones just to pick up stuff. So you're just seeing players moving in, you know, moving in, receiving and securing, moving in, receiving and securing. Ideally, I'd rather than moving right through the cones there and, and moving to another vacant cone or whatever, but I think it illustrates the skill. Okay, and just very briefly, small re games. This is a grid game to develop the body catch technique. Mark out a grid, 5 metres by 5 metres, using cones. Divide the players into groups of five. Position one player along each length of the grid. Position the fifth player in the middle of the grid. The outside players must move along the lengths of the grid, throwing the ball to each other to retain possession. The ball must be caught using the body catch technique. The middle player attempts to intercept the ball. If the ball is dropped or intercepted, the outside player responsible moves to take up position as the piggy in the middle. OK, so that might be a starting drill for you, a starting just as an activity, actually, a slightly small sided game, but you can be moving into 2v2, um, awarding a score every time there's a body catch taken clean in the chest and moving off. Um, and there's all sorts of other things you can do. Just be innovative. Think about how much activity you can get, how much movement you can get, how many touches you can get. OK, so that is just then a, the um, coaching card for that body catch. And as you can see there, coaching points move to receive the ball between the arms and the chest, eyes always on the ball. Extend the, extend the arms in front of the chest with elbows close together, palms facing up. Relax the chest. So arc the body, relax the chest and impact so the ball's not bouncing back out, cushion the ball in to secure uh, possession with both hands. And you have, you have your common errors, you have your uh, idea, method, introduce, demonstrate, execute, attend, and you have five or six various different games. So those coaching cards are available on the uh, Learning GA website and probably an Ulster GA website as well. OK, so moving into reach catch, this is a catch that a lot of people don't know exists. And, you know, I can totally understand that because a lot of people just see it as, you know, part of the high catch and they don't really designate it as a catch as such. So here's the reach catch played and used, utilised at the highest level. The ball was delivered by Ger Brady. Here McDonald puts in a lovely ball. 50 minutes, make three substitutions all at the same time. They're in serious difficulty. The reach catch in football is a technique used to catch the ball when it approaches at or above head height. It forms the basic element of the overhead catch. Here in Fitzgerald backing up. Again, it drops short to Fergal Byron. They give the ball away poorly that time. McGuigan, good ball. But again, unleash. You would anticipate winning all the balls. Different tempo. Faster, crisper delivery. Blake is seized upon there by Shawnee McDermott. They work it out to John Nolan. He's off as Cos Cooper made a good move. This is a great looking opportunity. Ends up on the back of the net and it's Daryl Gineda.
Okay, so the reach catch for me um, is a catch where you know you're above or, or shoulder height and your feet are still in contact with the ground. It can be anywhere 360 degrees around the body. So it can be out to the left, it can be up above, it can be out to the right, or pretend, well, maybe not so much down below, but it's definitely to the right, left, or above the head with feet still on the ground, moving at momentum. Most passes nowadays, you're looking for hitting the space, not the face, and very often the player receiving will have to reach to drive on. And obviously, that pass also gives them momentum to drive on or drive through the tackle or uh, eliminate their player. Okay, so just again, now this the, the reach catch is a difficult one. So I want you to think about any coaching points that might be different around the reach catch than we had for the low catch or indeed the body catch. So anything that might be different around the reach catch. So please, if you would, as soon as you can, send a few of those in. And I just read them out as they come in. Head, hands, body, feet are vital. Okay. Last read, hands closer together potentially, yeah. Eyes on the ball. Full extension of the arms, yeah, you're definitely reaching. And that's important, you know, you're really, you're at full extension of those arms and strong arms at that. Um, can move quicker. Yeah, I know what you mean, Kevin, by moving quicker. You know, you're you're receiving a ball that's put into space and you're moving at pace and it's giving it actually the, the proper uh, pass will give you momentum. But it's important that you're good enough to secure that pass and your skill level and your first touch is good. Okay, anything else just... Okay, listen, thanks for that. I appreciate that. So I'm just going to uh, run this and you can pick up Anything around the reach catch again that might be different. Soft hands, yeah, soft hands. Soft hands definitely when you're given the pass, without doubt. Here we see the reach catch being performed by an elite player. Note the position of the head, hands and feet. Now let's look at each of the key teaching points for the reach catch. With head up, keep eyes on the ball. As the ball approaches, extend the arms towards the ball and spread the fingers. Keep the thumbs behind the ball, forming a W shape with the index fingers. When the ball approaches from above, catch it slightly in front of the head at its highest point. On receiving the ball, secure the ball into the chest with both hands. Okay, so you can see, just we'll look again here now at the common faults as well. Here we see the thing there is that the arms are extended and you are traveling at pace, your feet are still on the ground, so stance and balance is key because that's at the stage where very often if you're reaching for a pass like that, you can receive a hit. So you have to be at your strongest and, and, and your core engaged. Not extending the arms fully is a common error when learning the reach catch technique. This may result in the ball being intercepted in a game situation as an opponent reaches and catches the ball first. To correct this error, ensure that the player extends their arms fully towards the ball and spread their fingers to receive the ball. Catching the ball behind the head is another common error when performing the reach catch technique when the ball is approaching above the head. To correct this error, ensure that the player catches the ball slightly in front of the head at its highest point. The player should be able to secure the ball quickly into the chest. Okay, so we're going to look at a few uh, drills and activities just to, to coach that. Personally, for me, I think at, at Andrea's level with young kids, teaching the reach catch has a lot to do with the pass. If the pass, if you're coaching uh, the sender to put the ball into space, you will 
you the player receiving will have to execute the reach catch because they'll have to reach out because that catch that ball is given a meter or so in front of them. So that is the key thing in my view. Not okay. So we'll just have a look. So you'll think about as coaches how you'd improve all of these drills. So always think without being too critical of drills, drill, how would you improve it? Is the reach catch technique? I like the fact that they're at least fisting the ball this time. But I've got a triangle using cones as shown. Divide the players into groups of four, one ball per group. Beginning at the cone with two players, each player in turn serves the ball for the next player to perform the reach catch. After serving, each player follows the ball. Begin by throwing the ball above the head and after a set time, change to fist the ball to head height. Encourage the catching player to move towards the ball. To increase the difficulty of the drill, the pace should be increased. Okay, so you'll notice in that drill that the big issue there is the receiver is too static. Um, so you, you'd want actually a free cone or a vacant cone in that drill that the player has to move towards to receive that ball. Um, and that would make that particular drill quite a bit better. Okay, so again, this is one that we done ourselves uh, up and down the screen the other night. So we just we're just looking at the player moving to a vacant cone in the in the in the sequence, so that the player is always moving towards the ball. So you, the receiver must execute the reach catch, even though the reach catch there is quite low, rather than maybe in a bit higher up. Okay, and we'll just look at maybe a potential weak game that could be used for this. This is a fun game to develop the reach catch. Mark out a triangle using cones as shown. Divide the players into groups of four, one ball per group. One player is positioned at each of the cones, while the fourth is the piggy in the middle. The players at the cones must pass the ball to each other for each to perform the reach catch. The player in the middle attempts to intercept the ball. If successful, the player whose pass was intercepted becomes the new piggy in the middle. Begin by throwing the ball up a set period of time. So again, a lot of these games seem to be like the piggy in the middle type games. Problem with that again is that the receiver is always too static. These players that I, that we're looking at in these videos are well able and well ready for small sided games. And if you want to focus on the reach catch, the low catch, uh, or the body catch, then you put a condition in that that rewards that each time it happens. Um, so I think that would improve that quite a bit. Okay, so we're finishing off with the high catch, the big one, the spectacular one, the lovely one, the one that all the kids um, admire, and we all as adults admire, but probably statistically happens a lot less than um, possibly the low catch. As I said earlier, 70-80% of balls received a game are off the grass. Um, but yet we're always we're always love to to look at the high catch as a spectacular one. And they came back to win that game. David Clark's kick, huge one. McGarrity with a great catch. Mulligan catches it well. Inside lead off to Canavan. Great goal! The high catch is one of the most spectacular techniques in Gaelic football and is used to field the ball from the air. It is used in particular to win possession from a kick out or long pass. The high fielding of Daryl O'Shea just through the 10 minute mark in the second half here at Croke Park. A little nudge from Gallagher on Nicholas Murphy, but it didn't put him off. Stephen Cluxton with this kick out and Dublin have been taking a lot of time over their kick outs this year and they win the first one here. So look at Ryan again after all we said about the kick. And Paul Galvin turns, shoots. Kick out by Cluxton again. Oh, fantastic catch. In his place, he started really well. Inside for Kieran Donaghy. What a beginning for him. What a shot. This could be a rout. So listen, it is an absolutely fantastic skill and it's... Great to see it executed, as you've seen there on the video. But, you know, there's no point gaining possession unless you retain that and all the rest. And it still is only possession, the same as every other type of possession. Um, so, high catch. Now, the high catch is slightly more intricate. Um, 
So I want you to key to text me in any coaching points that jump to mind. If you were taking children and you're starting to coach them on the high catch, what are the things that you would want to be telling them? What are the key coaching points of the high catch? Different, uh, different skill this time, I think, than some of the rest of them. So if you would, please, very nearly there now. So I'd like you to stay active. So let's get them coming in. Okay, timing and not be static. Brilliant, Fenton, thank you. A few other people put in there. Brave, bravery in the high catch, yeah. Extension of the arms. Are the arms fully extended? Or are they slightly bent at the elbows? Depends, it can be either or. Eyes on the ball, catch the ball at its highest points, extension of the arms. Eyes on the ball, catch at highest point with full extension of arms, good landing. Keep eyes open. Catch the ball when the player is at their highest point. Yes, that is very important. Has to be vital. Head, hands and feet. Sometimes, you know, we struggle and I struggle myself. Like we played the game all our lives and then when someone asks us to break down the skill, we find it difficult. I remember one time asking Oshin McConville to do a, a, a session on kicking at our conference in Cavan a number of years ago. And Oshin, who was one of the, I suppose, one of the best kickers of a ball that we ever witnessed, come to me and he says, you know, Roger, to be honest, yeah, I never thought about it. I never thought about the, how you break it down. So I think that's the thing sometimes with great players, you know, we all, because we play the game, struggle then actually to think about how does this actually happen? How would we coach someone who hasn't a clue what we're talking about? So we have to think like they think. So I'm going to just show you this one. It'll break it down. Here we see the high catch being performed by an elite player. Note the position of the head, hands and feet. Now let's look at each of the key teaching points for the high catch. Adopt a starting position down the line of the oncoming ball. Approach the ball as it begins to descend. Moving forward, plant the jumping foot and extend upwards, swinging the opposite leg forward. Extend the arms fully above the head. Head up, keep eyes on the ball. Spreading the fingers to form a W shape behind the ball, catch the ball slightly in front of the head. Cushion the ball and secure to the chest with both hands. Okay, so we'll just go straight into the common faults here and then we'll talk a wee bit more about the high catch. There are actually five phases of the high catch, which we'll talk about later. Okay, so common faults. Not swinging the non-jumping leg forward is a common error when learning the high catch technique. This may result in the player not jumping to their full potential and being outfielded. To correct this error, ensure the player swings the opposite leg forward as they begin their jump. Not extending the arms fully is a common error when learning the high catch technique. This may result in the ball being intercepted in a game situation as the player fails to take the ball at the highest possible point. To correct this error, ensure that the player extends their arms fully towards the ball as it approaches. Jumping too early or too late is a common error when learning the high catch. Often this leads to the player missing the catch or leaving the ball open to interception. To correct this error, ensure the player watches the flight of the ball closely, jumping to catch the ball at the highest, safest point.
Okay, just that's, that looks fine. You know, not everything is going to, every catch is going to be perfect when you're in the heat of the battle. There'll be different ways of catching the ball. Any way of getting it into the hands, you'll be happy enough. Um, it says come down the, straight down the line. I remember great catchers like Frank McGuigan, maybe Eugene McKenna, Jer- Jerry McElhenney, in my day, who could actually come across at right angles and take a ball before it reached the ruck in the middle of the field waiting on it. So those were exceptional catchers, players that could nearly hang in the air almost to catch a ball. Um, not always sure that you need the arms fully extended. Some great catchers are getting up that high that you know the arms are still slightly bent. But just keep it simple. There are five stages to the high catch. And I want you to text in any one of those. Now, I'll give you one of those to start off. There's a run-up, right? So run-up is one, okay? Can anybody text me in any other stage of the high catch? What do you do after the run-up? So I'm just waiting on you to come in there. Some great stuff. Actually, there's still ones coming in in the previous one. So the run-up, what happens next? Think about it. Brilliant. Okay, perfect. So after the run up, take off, spring with foot and hit lead leg. But that's that's part of the takeoff. That's actually get the balance right, head up, plant, push off, pivot, pivoting foot. Okay, I don't know whether this helps you, but I'm going to just give you this five stages. It may help you sometimes. So there's a run up, there's a takeoff, there's a flight, there's a landing, and there's a drive off. And each one of those stages is crucial. Of course, eyes and the ball all the time. So we're just going to look at a few wee drills here. Um, again, just that we took our sails the other night. Jump and turn. That's good. That's, it. That's exactly what I'm looking. Jump and turn. Perfect. So the point that we're making here is that at the, even at the fundamental stage, we've got to get children comfortable jumping and landing even without a ball, jumping and land, get them comfortable so the fear of jumping and land is gone and we can eradicate that fear. Even you know, learn them to jump and land in one foot, jump and land in two, jump and turn. You'll see the really good players sometimes can catch a ball and actually take off in the other direction. So just getting them comfortable, jump get them there. Other one, watching the flight of the ball. And keep okay. it going. So maybe if you've a player or two players who are struggling, to keep their eyes on the ball, just get them doing this. What's the arc of the ball? What's the flight of the ball? Eyes fall on that ball all the time. Okay. As soon as you hit the ground, you're away. So, you right when you're ready. That's good. Okay, now you want. So here we were just replicating basically that those five stages, that run up. And during the run up, you have to think about the, the, the actually the, the, the steps are shorter because it's like a recoil, the spring, they're ready for the spring. So it's like a cat almost about to take off. And then the takeoff, the flight in the air, eyes always looking through the arms. So eyes through the arms. You'll see photographs of people going up to catch the ball in the last minute. You know, the arms are crossed, their eyes are closed. Eyes always looking through those arms. Uh, and then securing possession, landing, and above all, driving off. And that drive off is so important nowadays because very often you'll see a player catching, making a great catch. They're surrounded by a ruck of players and they're turned over. You've got to be driving through that tackle. Okay, so just maybe look at that again. So the, you hit the ground, you're away again, lads. Right when you're ready. So that run up, small steps, drive, That's take good. off, land, and drive again. Okay. And just put the ball then. So the players, small steps, and drive. Eyes the ball, looking through the arms, securing possession, hitting the ground, driving and off. Drive. Okay. So those things, those are things that you might want to do if a player is having a specific problem. Now you're not going to do that with every player all the time. You don't necessarily need to do that. But if a player maybe has a particular gap in that skill, then you might want to do that. So maybe we'll just have a quick look at these. This is a basic drill to practice the high catch technique. Mark out a grid with cones appropriate to the number of players. While remaining within the grid, 
Each player throws a ball high above their heads to perform the high catch. Adapt the drill by requiring the players to kick the ball up to perform the high catch. Continue the drill for a set period of time. Okay, and just lastly, if we can bring this one up. This is a fun game to develop the high catch. Mark out a court using cones. Mark out a central zone, net or barrier to divide the court into two sides. Divide the players into two equal teams. The objective of the game is to field the ball after it is kicked into the court by the opposing team. Introduce a second ball to increase the intensity of the game. If the ball is caught, it is returned in the same way. But if the ball is not caught, the player who dropped it or who was nearest must surrender as prisoner to the other side, effectively increasing their numbers. The game is over when all the players of one team have been taken prisoner by the other. Another variation places one member of each team on the opposite side of the court identified by a bib. The objective is for this player to score by catching the ball in their opponent's court. After a successful catch, the ball is transferred to the opposing team. And again, you can pro progress these games into as, as 3v3, 4v3, rewarding a mark, maybe in every time a player takes a clean catch, just to highlight that. If that's the skill you're highlighting in that particular condition for that game, then that's something you can also do. So again, the coaching card for the skills card for the high catch, the, the skills again are the key coaching points moving forward, plant the jumping foot and extend upwards, swinging the opposite leg, extend the arms over the head, head up, eyes on the ball, spread the fingers to form that W, shape behind the ball, big hands, watch the ball into the hands, draw the ball into the chest with both hands. And some of these don't have the drive off, but it's so important to coach that drive off and you have your six uh, activities or games at the bottom. Okay, listen, that really covers the the um, the four catching skills. Um, I hope you got something out of that. It's worth maybe looking at that again when we have the recording ready, you know, because some of those videos are quite good uh, and some of them are, are, are quite helpful, hopefully. Just a couple of the questions that come in earlier in the week, um, if you can just bear with me. I'm just going to read through a few of them. Uh, any ideas that would help coach uh, kids, coach the skills of kids? Well, hopefully a lot of what you've seen tonight will help the kids. OK, starting right from the ground, you know, at three, four years of age, on the ground, watching the ball into the hands, giving it a big hug, rolling it back along the floor. Once you're able to go airborne, then taking it on the chest, you know, the low catch, just improving first touch by practice, practice, practice. Um, one other question, what specific drills can be carried out by players to perfect the high catch technique? Well, you saw you saw some there at the end. You saw maybe how you would break it down into the five stages of catching. You saw some wee small games there where it started off unopposed and then when the, the, the one where you're taking the prisoner becomes opposed. But there's lots of drills, 2v2, um, one going to break, the other player going to catch, 4v4 and so on. Um, but if you specifically want drills or, or games like that, there's probably, if you email us, either Tony or myself, we can send you off maybe a group of drills for that. Um, but you should see enough on, on this video as well or in these videos as well to help that. How do you improve a player's confidence in overhead catching, especially when they're at senior level and it's come a week to the game? I'd be honest with you, I think when you get to senior level, it's difficult. It is difficult, but positive reinforcement, trying to break it down for them, trying to find that one thing, the gap in the, in, in the skill or the one coaching point maybe that it's breaking down with and, and giving them confidence around that. But when you get to senior level, you know, it is definitely the learning curve has has definitely leveled off quite a bit. Best advice for the high over catch, confidence, keep practicing. You know, I'm, I know we're, we're not going back to it when you're young and all the rest, but listen, kicking a ball against a wall, opposed, unopposed, off a roof, and particularly now the times it's in it during the pandemic, I think that's something we should be encouraging all of the time is practicing those skills at home and just becomes part of of, of uh, 
their daily or daily routine. Any elim- any tips for eliminating the habit of palming the ball down rather than catching it again? If, if a player's doing that, either it's to do with they're afraid uh, of, of the catch or they're afraid of the ball or they just need to build confidence and get their hands around it, doing it, break it down, doing it unopposed and then working into a game situation. Somebody's saying here, I'm currently with an under-13 girls teams. Any tips on getting them to be a bit tougher when playing well? I just think is, you know, building it up, finding, finding the level they're at and constantly moving them out of their comfort zone. Every session should bring players out of the comfort zone a little bit. Not so much that it's putting them off, but gradually, slowly but surely, moving players out of the comfort zone all the time and building confidence. A uh, couple of other ones here. Any drills in particular to assist in stopping kids from palming balls down? Well, if it's drills you're looking for, probably you're better to contact Tony or myself specifically. But again, if they're palming the ball down, they're not executing the, the, the key points of the skill. Um, sometimes there is a time to palm the ball down. Actually, that is a skill in itself. You know, breaking a ball to the side or to the left or, or seeing a player and be able to rise up. And, and, and actual fact, sometimes it can be better than the catch because it can set up a play and, and give momentum to, to a move that would not that would stop if you actually caught the ball. Um, somebody says, I'm totally new to this first thing you teach. Well, the first thing you teach is if they're not able to do it, uh, like you saw at the very beginning, was on the ground, rolling the ball into the hands and hugging the ball and bringing it in and building confidence and then slowly getting airborne, bouncing first on the bounce and then from semi-airborne to fully airborne. Is there any small set of games you can use to practice that? Well, you saw plenty of them tonight and there's a horde more of, of small set of games you could use. I would encourage 2v2, 3v3 as soon as they have a grasp of the skills at all. Plenty of touches, plenty of positive outcomes, a good feel, good factor in all the coaching and training sessions that you do. Should all types, catching types, be introduced at the same at same age group as, as some other types of age? I think the technical skills should be all introduced as soon as you possibly can. Um, they're all tools in the in the toolbox. And if someday your player is going to be in, it could be a reserve final, it could be a club final, it could be a county final, it could be a North Ireland final, but they may have to reach for that skill. And if it isn't in the toolbox, they're going to be found wanting. So... You know, coach all the skills. Okay, well, listen, if anybody specifically wants to follow up, you know, that's, I suppose, what our coaching department, also G, are there for. We're there to help people, and particularly people at the grassroots level. Like, I, I delivered this uh, face-to-face, I think, a year or two ago, and some people had never heard tell of the reach catch, and I totally understand that because, you know, people just think that all the catch ensures that you just catch the ball and what else there is to it. But the, Knowledge is good, and as a coach, you may not have to use it that often. And I would be advocating that you don't be spot and fixing every two minutes and spoiling the session. But to be able to do it and to have the knowledge to do it is very powerful. So, listen, if that's okay with everybody, um, have a good evening. What's left of it, and thank you for tuning in tonight.